Welcome, everybody, to this episode of the Raw Recap on the Pro Wrestling Sheet. Ryan Satin, John Roker, we are recovered from being <laughs> ill and sick and having bronchitis and getting WrestleMania crud on you. Like, we are recovered now and back. People have been clamoring for our thoughts on so many things, Ryan. It's great to be back behind the mic sitting on the de uh, desk with you. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I, we... we for Wrestling Sheet Radio, we did like a huge recap, like yeah, of course. almost a two hour show of like everything WrestleMania related. But I knew so, but I just got so many responses from people like, no, 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 no. Yeah. We wanted to hear what Roka thinks about the Iconics. <laughs> so, so there was a lot of that. Uh, and, I, and yeah, I, we're, we'll, we will get into it because the Iconics were on the were. episode. So, we have, we, <laughs> so yeah, we'll, we'll have an opportunity to discuss this. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to be back. I'm excited we're both back. We're yeah. both, we were both sick. I, we were texting oh. each other, both feeling like absolute garbage last yeah, week. Of yeah. Just like, I was going to come in. And then he was like, I was going to come in. We were both like, no, let's not sit there in, yeah. in, in front of the camera looking like we're death. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and let's instead, we'll we'll just have to wait. I'm sorry, but thank you guys for your patience. Yeah. Uh, I there was, I feel like if there's any episode to jump back up into Raw with, it's this one because a lot of stuff went down. Yeah, superstar shakeup. All a lot of a lot of new faces from SmackDown coming over to Raw, and then of course tomorrow night we'll find out who from Raw is going over to SmackDown. Tonight. Oh, or tonight, right, right, tonight, tonight we'll right. Out. We'll find out. But tomorrow we'll talk about it. Uh, so let's start it off here. Uh, coming out, Vin. Uh, uh, sorry, Shane and Stephanie come out to announce that they they mess with the crowd back and forth. Shane getting the booze now instead of Stephanie, which is always fun to see the the vacillation of the fans one way or the other, depending on who's in the storyline. And the first, and they start to announce who's going to be the first one. And the Miz's music hits. Miz comes down. Uh, Shane ushers Stephanie out of the ring. Miz gets the best of Shane in, li in a little bit. Then Shane gets the best of Miz. Then Miz pulls a chair out, takes care of business, standing there with blood coming off his head to Renee Young's dismay. So uh, what do you think about this whole opening uh, uh Promo. I like Ms. Dad. I've obviously enjoyed some of Ms. Dad, but yeah. you know more than anyone that like bringing the Shane Miz storyline to Raw as the first thing announced yeah, yeah, yeah. is my nightmare. <laughs> I, I have not enjoyed the Shane McMahon Miz feud, oh. even if I enjoyed the match at yeah. WrestleMania for what it was. Um, I, the continuation of this feud is not what I wanted. So, um, no, I, 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 I would say that I did not love this being like the big first kickoff of the Superstar Shakeup. I don't think it held any uh, that much. I don't think it showed that much importance, really. Yeah, yeah, I agree um, with that. You know, obviously the, the sight of Miz and the blood was cool or whatever. Um, I did enjoy Shane doing. Uh, I, I, the one part of this I've enjoyed is Shane uh, berating the announcers. Yes. And so I did like him uh, having Mike Rome do it and then asking him to do it in French and Mike Rome just having this look on his face like, I don't speak French. <laughs> like, and then Shane just being like, oh, well, I speak French and yeah. just doing it himself. I enjoyed that part of things, but I just... I, I, the the Miz Shane thing just really doesn't excite me. It doesn't. And why do we need Shane as a heel? I don't know. He's a SmackDown guy. Why are you bringing that over to Raw? Like, isn't he the SmackDown guy? Of, right? Well, no. Did I miss they, anything? They, yeah, no. Remember they said that the McMahons are all across the board. Now. Oh well. Okay, fine. Whatever. All right. So so the heel will come over. But like to me, I agree with you. I don't think this is the way you bring Miz back. But. If it did anything else, if it did anything, it reinforced that Miz is the face coming into Raw now, which will be very interesting. I think they should let this McMahon thing die and just let Miz get into these uh, battles with other people. Of course, AJ showed up near the end to really battle the heel, so we'll see where his place is, where Miz's place is, because all of a sudden now there's some exciting new matchups, but everybody seems to have been paired off except for Miz, and Miz may have to be paired off with Shane, so your nightmare may continue. It does I, seem like it's going to continue for that exact yeah. reason, and I, and I I, I just don't know where he fits on the totem pole of things yeah. on Raw. You know, I, I felt like he was firmly established in his role on SmackDown mm -hmm. um, and, and his position on the card there. I, I just, yeah, I, I, I have a hard time believing that he's going to be anything other than the guy who hosts Miz TV on Raw again. Right, right. That's I mean, how I look at it. And I don't like that. Yeah. He should be. He already did it. He already did it, you know, yeah. and I, 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 I 
I have a hard time believing that Face Miz is going to be paired up against the likes of like Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre, yeah. uh, Baron Corbin. And if he is, does that really no, no. sound like exciting matchups for the future of Raw? That's the thing. All the faces have the belts, right? Finn has the belt, and so does Rollins. So where does Miz go in this situation? Right. They, it can't be a steady stream because they're going to mess it up like the, the, the Daniel Bryan when he came back, giving him all those terrible people for him to fight until he finally got to the Miz. So that concerns me all around. Absolutely. Because if you're going to bring him back, you got to give him a program. Rollins must feel the breath of Miz on his shoulders to take that belt. Because eventually that's going to happen. And no I wonder, way. You, th th like, you think they'll make Miz Universal Champion as a face? Yes. No way. You don't think so? I, that's got to happen. I think they're going to turn Rollins. That's what I think. Eventually they're going to turn Rollins heel again. Which would be fun, because Rollins heel is always my favorite. Mm. Rollins face is nice, but Rollins heel is great. Agree. I, I agree with you in that yeah, aspect, yeah. for sure. I just, uh, I think, <laughs> see, here's one thing that's confusing to me. Is I, struggling. I feel like Finn has to move to SmackDown tonight. Oh, you think so? Okay. He is screwed if he is not moved to SmackDown okay. tonight. He okay. needs to be the AJ Styles of SmackDown for the next few years. That's fair. He needs that, that rub. He needs to be the top guy on SmackDown. Okay. He can fill the role left behind by AJ Styles. Now, I know that it's more than like, like you know, we put, we put it up on the site last night, yeah. um, but you might probably saw it this morning, is that WWE is now teasing that Vince McMahon is going to announce uh, the biggest acquisition in the history of SmackDown Live uh, on tonight's show. So, Great that would be one of two people, pretty much. Tell me. Roman Reigns. Or? Brock Lesnar. What? So interesting. So, so you don't think it'll be someone from the outside. You think they'll bring someone from Raw to make a huge acquisition? Yeah. Okay. I don't think someone's out. They, who are they going to bring from the outside? Gronkowski. I thought about Gronkowski. I thought mm. about Conor McGregor. Oh, Conor. But oh, Jesus Christ. But I just I, no. If there were talks <laughs> going on between those two parties, <laughs> yeah. or I, you know, either of those two parties, yeah, I think it'd be more known. I think it would okay. be. It, it wouldn't be that much of a secret, I yeah. don't think. I think that it would be semi-known, and I don't think that Conor McGregor is coming over tonight. Okay. I don't think that Rob Gronkowski is signed. Tonight. If, what if it's Baszler? That wouldn't. That, that no? wouldn't either. Okay. You know, like right. I love NXT, but I don't think there's anyone in NXT that could warrant the. Biggest acquisition. Biggest acquisition in okay. history of SmackDown. That's you know, history like, of SmackDown. That's you know, huge. like, and even Roman Reigns, I don't know if he. I don't think so. Yeah, I agree know? with that. I agree. But, he doesn't. But the Rock was on SmackDown for the love of exactly. God. Exactly. You know, so that that's why I go. Oh, I don't know. Um, but I do think they're going to try to fill the role left behind, I and mean, we're going to get to AJ later. But okay. like, I do think they're going to try and fill AJ's. The void left behind by AJ with Roman Reigns. Yeah. That, yeah. That's my guess. Well, we'll see. We'll see. All right, moving on. We got Hawkins and Ryder and Alistair Black taking on Ricochet, the Revival, and <laughs> the Viking experience. <laughs> what in the I mean, like, I saw Norm's article on the pro wrestling sheet, and I was like, oh, what is this? I clicked on it as I was driving home, and I almost ran into the side of the <laughs> I mean, a, bar a barricade there because I could not believe the ridiculousness and the stupidity of this decision <laughs> and that the fans immediately destroyed it. So oh, it, yeah. It makes me wonder, like, who is in charge in the when these situations come up? Obviously, Vince, but like, isn't it <laughs> obviously? But isn't it run through like a like? Doesn't Triple H go? Ah, I don't know, boss. This seems like of course a he does. Dumb fucking idea. Of course he does. Yeah, but then Vince doesn't listen. Hey, it's, Vince, it's Vince McMahon. Yeah, dude. the Viking experience is like something you would see come out of in the '80s when Hogan was wrestling. That's like tugboat and earthquake. It's like it doesn't make any sense to me. It's like the Berserker, or like the Warlord. Yeah, the Warlord. Right, exactly. Like from WCW, the old school Warlord and all that crap. Like that. This is mind blowing to me that they, they make this decision because the War Raiders actually were they're the tag team champs at NXT. I loved their uh, battle at NXT Takeover uh, WrestleMania weekend. That was fantastic. So to me, I'm like, well, why are you going to bring them and immediately sink them with this stupid? Ass name. Okay, so before, <laughs> there's a lot to unpack. There, yes, but I okay. So I, before we fully discuss it, I just wanted to say this because I don't want to get past this first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we even get into Viking experience, <laughs> um, prior to them walking out, there was Ricochet's entrance. Yes, Ricochet. And I want to say, <laughs> I laughed for a good ten minutes on them adding that Ricochet noise of being like, <laughs> like we get it. His name. <laughs> Is Ricochet. That's so dumb. 
Tom. We get it. You don't have to beat it down, our, yeah. beat it on our heads that his name was Ricochet. We get it. We get it. When his name was Ricochet, you don't need to add the Ricochet noise <laughs> prior to his music to drive home the fact that his name is Ricochet. He's like, already over. He's he already, we were already into it. Like, come on. Okay, that, that's one. But I was, I was oh. so busy laughing, oh. and I'm texting all my friends that watch us. I'm texting yeah. James and you know Kevin and all them, and I'm laughing about this Ricochet noise. And we're all texting, like, what? This is, what is WWE <laughs> doing? And then all of a sudden, it's like. Eric, Ivar, the Viking experience. We, uh, my phone just like died. Yeah, of course. And the death, text messaging uh, death. Like just so, bing, 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 bing. It sounded like ricochet noise on my phone. It's like bing, 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 bing. bing. Um, and, oh. and it's everyone just going, what did they just say? Yeah. Did they just say the Viking experience? Okay, so <laughs> wild set of uh, circumstances there. Uh, but, okay, so... I think the name is stupid. Yes. Duh. I think the name is stupid. We all can agree on that. How, except for Vince. However, I will say this much. Oh, no. Because I do think the name is stupid, so I don't want to look I'm defending anyone. I will say this much. I do think that people like Road Dog and Mick Foley had a point on Twitter where they were basically saying, like, I should pull up the text. Well, I know Foley said, well, people hated mankind. Well, he said if there had been a Twitter when mankind walked out, I'm sure it would have been, like, what the F are you guys doing, yeah, WWE? But that was more about that nobody really believed that Foley could be a champion. That's a different conversation. No, no, no. He's saying from the Cactus name? Jack to, Mick, to, to Mankind. Oh, right. You know, right, like right. some differences. In it, but it's like also <laughs> a completely different character, I think. Right. Like you had this completely different You had a mask yeah, now. Yeah. You had an entire gimmick change. Yeah. This was not that. Their gimmick was already that they were Vikings. Yes. Like yeah. it's similar to the Ricochet thing. Like you had to tell us they're Vikings. We're looking at them. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. can see that they are Vikings. That's their thing. Look at them. Yeah. He had a Viking wedding, for God's sake, you know? Um, With Nikki okay. Cross, yes? Yeah, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Sarah, Sarah Logan. Sarah Logan, that's right. Um, but, okay, so Road Dogg said this. He said, so someone said, come on, you two. Let's be real here. Stop defending something so obviously bad. When you do that, it makes it worse. And Road Dogg said, only if you'll admit that in three months, heck, one month, they'll just be called Viking Experience, and more people will know that name than ever knew War Machine. I thought you all were woke. Come on, man. Bullshit. Really? It's bullshit. See, okay. If you had started with War Machine, people would know War Machine. You can't be called War Machine. That would have been stupid. Why? Do you want me to list all the reasons? Yeah, well, there's just, multiple reasons. There's a Marvel character with the name already. Uh, also, yeah, there's a, okay, a, a guy a who went to jail well, how could you get very famously who beat the crap oh, out of yeah. his porn star girlfriend right. nope, who is point. named War Machine. You cannot name okay. the War Machine. Peter Rosenberg was right when he said that okay. way back when. Everyone that's, gave him a, shit. that's a fair. I know everyone gave him shit because he, he called War Machine one person. It's different. But still, <laughs> he, he was like, War Machine, that guy is going to have to change his name or whatever. But, but, but. Let's not all pretend like we didn't get over the name War Machine being changed very quickly. Like nobody really was like, oh, War Machine, now that war is, what the F, NXT? So, right. they, they, I mean, we accepted it pretty quickly, we that did. change. That's, that's the thing. I don't understand how, if it's okay in NXT, it's still the same company. When you go to the main brand, they got to change it. I just I don't get it. They do serve different, they, they serve different people. I, and I, I don't know that this to be the case, but I could see Vince being like, no, we don't want to promote war on television. You have a you have a thing on the um, on the channel, the Monday Night Wars. What the fuck? From it's the 90s, yeah, time, but though. it's literally war. It's you but they're say not promoting it. The, the name war on TV all the time. That's yeah. old, it's a thing that was from the nineties. That's right. a term they but can't change now. Raw in reverse is war. Like that's that's a thing. That's kind of the double entire of the name. That's kind of what is involved but in. They this. don't call it Raw's War anymore. No, they don't. Right, but they. Used I was to. thinking the same thing. Yeah. Because I thought the same thing myself. I said, well, they, don't, they used to call it Raw's War, but yeah. they don't anymore for a reason. That's so ridiculous. And I agree. Me. I agree. It's silly. It's very silly. Well, okay, fine. Fine. Let's throw away the fact you can't do War Machine. Great. Okay. I get, let me concede that point. I'm okay to concede the point. Okay, yeah. But the Viking experience is not the guy. No, the Viking answer. experience sounds like it's very similar to when they called Paige and Becky Lynch and Charlotte the submission sorority. You're like, that sounds like yeah. some weird beard porn or something yeah. like that. You know, like like you're into some Viking. Oh, you're into the Viking experience. Cool. You know, I'm like just, that's. I'm just confused, Ryan. Where you draw the line? Because like you have matches. When people are bleeding out of their faces and orifices and wherever, they cover and all 
blood now. Yeah, okay. They try to stop that as much as possible. They just literally let off the show with yeah. blood. But they win matches. They do try to stop blood. They but try. There's no hardcore matches. You're right. There's no hardcore matches anymore. But you do see it happening. You do see people bleeding. Hell, Ronda was bleeding all over that match the, at the WrestleMania thing. And so was, I think, Becky or Charlotte was bleeding as well. So, like, there's blood that happens in these matches. And then all of and you have ladder matches, no holds barred, you know, and all of a sudden, war is the fucking issue? Like, it's just mind-blowing to me where the line is metaphorically drawn or figuratively drawn where you can't go too far and say this. They're, they're, <laughs> I agree with you. Their heels, War Machine, implies something negative. As well, their faces, though. Uh, what? Aren't they faces? No, they teamed up with the revival. Oh yeah, you're right. So they are. You're right. Heels. They are being positioned yeah. in the face or the heel side. Yeah, of things. you're right. So I thought it was kind of weird because they're not really like yeah. heelish dudes. So it's interesting, and maybe they're setting up something with them down the road. I, they're obviously going to go for the titles, so that's going to be an interesting uh, thing as it goes along. But like, I, I just I think there was a better name out there. That's all. That's no, all I, I said. I the Vikings would have been. I 100 percent agree with you. That there could have been a better name out there. Honestly, I was more offended that they changed their singular names. Oh, of, right. of Raymond Rowe and Hanson, like. I always thought Hanson was a cool name, even though it's similar to the boy band group. Yeah. Like, even though it's like it's got that boy band connotation, I kind of like that he took something that is uh, that is normally um, look. What's the word I'm looking for? Associated oh. with this young prepubescent uh, boy band, <laughs> and made it into like a tough bearded dude. I kind of. I liked that. That's like, fair. I thought that was cool. Yeah. Um, maybe that was just me. Clearly, well, Vince didn't agree, but um, right. yeah, the Eric and Ivar thing really was because he's Eric the Viking yep. now. Yep. Like that's a movie. That's a movie with Tim <laughs> Robbins. <laughs> you know, like yeah. look it up. Ivar. Yeah. Ivar. Like, come on. Like, is that really a, a name that's positioning someone? For future growth, Ivar. Yeah. Eric. Well, I, the, Eric. Is, is, his name is Eric. Not even Eric. Something. Yeah. Just Eric. They, look, they also they could have been called the Vikings. It does not. It, there's no copyright infringement because a TV show called Vikings and a, t, a team called Vikings. So it's it's out there. You, nobody owns the term Vikings. Those are real people. So but you, that probably you is why they want to own the name. They want to own the Viking experience. I guess. <laughs> I don't know, man. I told I told them off camera that I got to him and Norm that I got to go get a T-shirt before they stop making them because they will stop making. Oh yeah, of course. Those things are immediately limited edition Dude, right now. I, I really do think. No though, matter what Road Dog and Mankind say. I do think. Mm, in all respect to Road Dog and Mankind, I, do I just don't agree. I do think that in a matter of weeks, no one will care. We, well, yeah, because people will start to not care about them, and that's what fair, you don't want. Fair, fair. Right? You don't want the ascension all over again. Mm, I just think that, like, no one's really causing a scene about Andrade, his name being shortened. And I guess it's different than shortening is different than changing altogether, yeah, but, yeah. like, no one cares that Elias isn't the drifter anymore, But you people know? do care that Mustafa is just Ali for a while. People cared about that and still have an issue with it. I don't and once again, the shortening a name is something else completely. Different, yeah. you got changing different, the yeah. name to a completely different name, that's something else. And then have it to be ridiculed. Uh, like, these guys are trying to make a living, and, you know, they, they get called up, which is a great experience to get called up to the main roster finally, because they have great NXT. And to have it come out and be ridiculed, this is Shockmaster-level kind of mistakes. Like, the fact, I tried to, th that gift doesn't even exist anymore. I tried to find that Shockmaster gif, and it's not there. It's not on the Giphy. I couldn't find it, because that's what, immediately what, how I was going to talk, I was going <laughs> to I was going to put the Viking experience is shock mastering, and I was going to put that gift. The gift doesn't exist. You know why? Because it's embarrassing. And, and the, the Viking experience is going to be the same thing, man. I, 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 I wish them well, and I, ho I hope they figure this out. I don't know how they retcon this as it goes down the road. Or maybe, maybe by some miracle, three months, maybe one month, as Road Dog says, we're all just calling the Viking experience. It's no big deal. All I know That's is my guess. when Cole started saying Viking experience, even Graves cut him off halfway through because he didn't know the, the ridiculousness of the name. Cole goes, the Viking, and then Graves started talking. He goes, Experience and oh 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 sorry my bad. I I, anyway. I I agree. Stupid. Yes. But I do think that in a month from now, we're just gonna be calling the Viking experience, and no one's gonna be sitting there saying it's the stupidest thing ever. No, we'll be smirking about. We'll be it. thinking. We'll, we'll be talking about the, the next stupid thing that we all. Yeah, probably. Do. They did. Well, by the way, there was a match, and the Viking experience I thought did really well they in the match. It. Yeah, and so like if you're gonna overcome a terrible name, this is how you do it. You know what was another stupid thing in this whole segment was. When Ricochet's music hit, besides the bing, 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 <laughs> them being like, does this mean that Ricochet is on Raw? Right. And then when Aleister Black, does this mean Aleister Black's on Raw? I don't know. Why don't you tell us? You're the commentator. You're the one who's supposed to know. Yeah. They've been on Raw and SmackDown 
for like months now. Yeah. What are you talking about? Like you tell us that's the whole point of this episode of the Superstar Shakeup. It was like really, it was like, even on Twitter they said, is Ricochet on Raw now? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. Your WWE. That's the whole point of I, this episode. I thought it was official that they were on Raw. It wasn't confirmed until after the show oh, that Alistair Black right, right, right. and, and Ricochet were on that's Raw. That's why I got confused. I thought for sure by having them show up on the Superstar Shakeup that they were on Raw. Well, that's what but I thought. They didn't announce it. And then right. James tweeted was yep. like James tweeted from the account saying like Ricochet is now on Raw, and I was like, James, I don't think they said that. And he was like, <laughs> Isn't that what Renee said? And I said, Nah, dude. She said, Is Ricochet on Raw now? And he yeah. was like, Oh. And then he went back and listened. He was like, Oh yeah, they did question it the whole time. Yeah. But then right when the show was over, they confirmed who the wrestlers officially on Raw were. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, and and the ones that were kind of like unclear. It was like EC 3s on Raw. <laughs> Unfortunately for him, uh, Lars officially on Raw. Right. Uh, Alistair Black, uh, Ricochet. Yeah. Eric Young. Mm -hmm. Eric Young. Random. <laughs> completely just separated Sanity Not without sanity, ever giving them a chance. Eric Young. Yeah. No, no. It looks like Sanity has been completely split up. Oh now shit! Because Killian Dane tweeted today saying thank you Eric Young and thank you Alexander Wolf. Like uh, it was great teaming with you guys. So they're all singles. They're all split up now. Oh. I even confirmed to the source but that you put the clock on all three of those guys. <laughs> How long they're going to be in the W? Stay I, in the W. Yeah, I, I even confirmed to the source afterwards that yeah. that sanity if they is couldn't, done, is officially been broken up. If they couldn't get he on said, as a group, he said, "Good luck, Eric Young. Good luck, WWE Wolf. I'll miss you both terribly. Have the time of my life as part of Sanity. You are phenomenal in the ring and outside of it. Thanks to everyone who supported us." Fuck, man. I know you hate when I say this, Ryan, but like buried. No, no. Oh. Um, go back to NXT. Like, you know, I get it. It's not as much money. I get, it, I get it, but you're still wrestling and you're having fun and you're in front of people and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's less money, but at least you're enjoying your job. But now, that's not the way, but that's not what they're there for. I know. They didn't get signed a new contract to not be in WWE. I know, but, and but, Eric Young, but NXT is WWE. No, it's not. <laughs> What? It, it's not. It's WWE NXT. It literally. It's not on TV though. Oh uh, well, it's not it on is. TV. No, it's not. It's what's well, on the WWE oh, Network. That's oh, not I being on television. You. I got you. I got you. That's not you. television exposure. That's yeah. WWE Network exposure to the hardcore wrestling fan base. But what's when the you're point? on WWE, the whole point is to become as as big of a yeah. wrestler as possible, yeah. and you don't become that in NXT. But Eric is already is such. Eric's a journeyman. Eric is like literally. So why would he want to go back to NXT? The Case Keenum of the. You want to go back where you can play, and I think he can play well down at NXT. Stay there or go to. AEW, don't like. I don't think you stay at WWE. You well, think he should leave his dream job? I don't know if it's his dream job. Of course, it's his dream. It's every Why? wrestler's dream job to be in WWE. I don't think it's every wrestler's. Dream. It is every wrestler's initial dream job. Being in WWE. Whether they get it and leave, and then it no longer is their dream, it's different. But it's every wrestler's dream to be in WWE. Sting for the longest time resisted being in WWE. Okay, okay fine. Sorry. 99.9% <laughs> of wrestlers, Roka. <laughs> All right, fine. I don't know if you're I poking, agree You're picking the one one guy who it's was already a top guy. guy in the only other competition that WWE's ever had. <laughs> it's a big guy, though. I'm just like, I don't think, I think people, I think I think nowadays, and you know, you're younger than me, but people younger than you are coming into the business, and I don't know if they all 100% want to be part of a corporate structure. Like, some of them want to stay independent. These millennial kids want to do their own thing, and some of these kids want to go and slide in AEW, and they don't want to go to WWE. I think there's more of that happening, and it will. there will be more of that happening. Yes, it's more money, but you're also controlled more. They tell you what to do. They tell you they what do your the same name thing is. NXT. Yeah, no, but I'm, I'm talking about going to, like, if you go to AEW. They're like, going to do the same thing to you in AEW. Not 100%. You'll you have don't know that. They say. haven't had one television don't show yet. Don't you think they'll have, you'll have more say when wrestlers are running things? Don't you think you'll have more say? I'm sure you're going to still tell you whether you're winning or losing, Roka. That's, well, that's what I mean, but, like, you know? they might not fuck with your gimmick the way they can literally WWE say does. you're losing every night. You don't know. It's believable. It's the I same thing as WWE. You know? At my age, I would lose every night. But no, you look, but I mean, the, 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 I don't know if I'm saying with Eric Young. Here's how I look yeah, at yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. All those guys. Here's how I look at it, right? Okay. You say that, then you don't have confidence in yourself. Because if you think that you can only get over with two other guys. No, 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 no. Well, Let me finish rest. If you okay. think that you you have to go elsewhere, no. You want to prove yeah. that you belong there. Like, you don't go like, oh, woe is me. Let's go back to NXT so I can at least be in a match. No, you go like, I belong here. I right, right. should be just as on top as all the other guys. And you want to show that to people, you know? Like, totally I guarantee understand. you Eric Young looks at it not so much as like a 
shit, I'm screwed. And more so like opportunity of like, you know what? I got over just fine by myself in TNA alone. Mm -hmm. Impact. Whatever. He did. He was, he was great more on champion Impact. In Impact. So yeah. it's like, I'm sure Eric Young sees it an opportunity to like get himself over now. Like, you know what? Yeah. They didn't like that gimmick that they gave me. Yeah. Well, now I'm going to show them what's up. You know, same with Killian Dane. Same possible. with Alexander Wolf. You know, like we don't know. I just don't know how many stables break up and stay. Like DX is a rarity. There's this, when stables break up, they eventually like, you know what I'm saying? DX and NWO for horsemen, I guess when they break up, it's a rarity for uh, uh, factions to like go out on their own and, and establish themselves individually. It's rare. So I, I think with this, you've got a clock now on all three of these guys of how long they're going to stay in the WWE. While I agree with you, yeah. I think that for Alexander Wolf, I feel like I don't know this, but it wouldn't surprise me to see him be thrown into NXT UK. Um, oh yeah, he, he you know he he was previously in a thing you know he I think I believe he's part of Ringcom yeah. or whatever. And now that Walter's there, it would not surprise me to see them kind of like put Ringcom back together in NXT yeah. UK. Yeah. I don't know that, but okay. it wouldn't surprise me because Triple H likes to do that kind of stuff. And and especially since Killian Dane said goodbye to him, it makes me think that Alexander Wolf is going somewhere else. Right. Um, Killian Dane is a big massive he is dude. I don't know if there's a bias against him for some reason because, mm -hmm. you know, to me, it always felt weird from day one when they put a shirt on him yeah, and they yeah, put yeah. him in a singlet and he claimed it was all him, but it's like, I don't know, man. Like, it was never, then the, the, WWE never used you. All of a sudden, you were changing things up. It yep. seems like you, maybe you were trying to get them to change, but maybe they didn't make you wear those things, yeah. but clearly there was a reason something changed. You exactly, know? exactly. So, you know, I, I hope that they do something with Killian Dings. I do think he is a massively talented dude. I think both of us feel, give all three of them a shot. Let's yeah. see what they can do. Yeah, my, my only concern is I've seen this before many, many times, and these guys eventually either end up like leaving the company or end up on terrible feuds, rarely getting on TV, and what's the point? Yeah, and so it, it, that's, it does, my old, it does that's my only argument. It does make me fear that Eric Young is going to be used on main event from now on. Yes. All three of them, possibly. And, uh, but I like the idea. I got to see more from Walter, man. I, I don't know. I, I know he came in with all this pedigree. I, I saw that match. I didn't 100% enjoy him in the match. So I know he's got a great character. Look, if you got one name and it's a regular name, even more so, it's pretty incredible to be over the fans with just one name. But I just feel like I need to see more from him, and I don't know when that's going to happen. I also don't feel like he's been showcased as well as he should be in NXT. That's fair, too. I, I know that he's NXT UK is a little different because... He's not technically part of NXT, but I do think that. Before Pete Dunn, though, but I mean, it was I, I do as much as I like Walter. I feel like they expected that everybody who's watching NXT has already seen Walter, and they oh, don't need to explain him much. And right. I, I feel like more character work was needed since he's a guy who wears black trunks and yeah. he's got one name. One name. You know, like, yeah. and he just chops people really right, hard. So right. I don't know. I, I agree with you. Those guys scare me. Him and Lars. Those guys that are like kind of like one name guys that are big dudes. They, they scare me because I don't always see them getting over as. Uh, uh, Lengthwise, as long as other wrestlers do. So see, we'll I couldn't. See. I disagree in terms of Lars. I like Lars. I think Lars is actually. They've been. I feel like they've been actually handling the Lars debut great. Yes, I agree. I, I, I yeah. like the way it's going. I hope it stays that realm, and they don't like, you know, start having him lose to other people in certain ways. That, that yeah, right now he's like the Attitude Era killer. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's just like beating people. up all the people that you used to love. You <laughs> he's, know, he's going to show up at Stone Cold's house. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's move on. Uh, Finn Balor and Andrade got into it here. This was fun. This is going, if they keep Finn, which you don't think is going to happen, but if they keep Finn here, this would be a fantastic program. These guys working it. There was enough chemistry here that you got like shades of what could be and uh, Andrade seemed alive in this match. So this is fun. And Zelina was incredible. Almost broke her neck doing that Hurricane Rana. That was scary. How she, she, she didn't fully hit it. She was using shin instead of knee or, or thighs. That scared me a yeah. little bit. So, But it all worked out. Uh, Andrade got the win here. Balor doesn't lose too much in the loss because you're putting Andrade over. So did you like this? I liked the match. Okay. I don't know if I liked... Andrade moving to Raw. Really? No, I don't. Shit, I, I disagree. I like him on Raw. Really? I do. I just feel like similarly... Him and Miz would be a fun program if you're going to put anybody... If Balor goes, him and Miz could be interesting. I just don't see like a lot of matchups that like thrill me for Andrade. I mean, I guess... Okay. I mean, like, yeah, Andrade and Seth sounds awesome. Sure. And Andrade and Finn Down the road, program. Yeah. But, like, beyond that, I just... I just feel like the show is already so heel heavy. I mean, mm -hmm. unless they're getting rid of like, 
I don't know, because he's really not like, there's no one else in that like small guy heel role on the show really that I'm thinking of. Like, yeah. right? There's no one that Vince really pushes that's like a small dude that's a heel, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that I, not on Raw. Not on Raw. Mm -hmm. That's why I fear that like the move to Raw isn't as Oh, I see what you're him, saying. You know? Because there isn't a spot there for that he's that not like taking guy. someone else's spot. Right, you right. know, he's replacing some of this. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, maybe unless they're like sending Drew McIntyre to SmackDown mm. and he's going to kind of like get that Drew McIntyre. But I don't see that happening. Drew McIntyre is no. a giant. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. compared to Andrade. Yeah. So I. That's why I don't know. I don't know if this was a preview of what's to come. So I don't know if, if Finn is going to go. Maybe. Yeah. But even still. One feud, yeah. like, you know, like for now, I just yeah. But I hear what you're saying. It all depends on what opens up as this goes forward, yeah. right? Yeah. Right now, I, the concern is absolutely valid because you don't really see like beyond uh, Miz, it's literally Rollins. There's not much so, else. I mean, there Ray in Mysterio, between. I guess. But yeah. we were already doing that. Yeah, Ray and yeah, but we already did that. And yeah. I don't want Reigns for God's sakes. I don't want that situation. So it's like, who's he gonna feud with? Yeah, exactly. That's so, my thing when I look at fair. it. Where I looked at it like, well. Cool, but what are they going to do with him there? Like, they already yeah. weren't doing a lot with him on SmackDown. Yeah. Do I think that Vince is suddenly going to have a renewed interest in Andrade because he's on Raw now? I don't I don't think so. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. I mean, I guess you got Andrade and Aleister Black, Andrade and Ricochet, I guess. Oh, Ricochet, I, if you separate them out, but these guys have been fighting together this whole time. Yeah. So I don't know where Black and, and Ricochet, I think eventually, I think what you've been saying for a while now has to happen. They have to go out on their own. They have, they have, that's true, absolutely. Because they, now that you've moved in War Raiders uh, or Viking experience, uh, you don't need to have Aleister Black and Ricochet vying for the title. So there's no need. And you turn Chad Gable and Rude, which happened a little bit later, they fully embrace the heel aspect of it all. Then and the Usos, I don't know what's uh, now the Usos are coming to Raw. There's no need for Alistair Black and and uh, and uh, Ricochet. There's to no be a need team. No, to be a team. No, absolutely not. Absolutely yeah, not. I agree. They held the spot for what it was. They had a great WrestleMania match. Now go singles and let's see. And who knows down the road, those two in a in a program would be fantastic. Yes, and I think that you know they were they were they were great for what they were. Yes, like you were saying, but I just. They're, they serve the roster better. You just can't let go of the fact that they should be singles. You just can't. As no. much as you enjoy watching them as a tag team, you know, and the whole jumping around and sitting and all that's, that's cool. Like it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. But I, I it'll get better. Old. It'll get it, it. Move on from it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, when Mustafa jumped on, I was like, all right, we're we're that's your dad doing the. Yeah, the I built the same right? way. Right. Yeah. And I like Mustafa yeah. Ali, I but too. I built the same way with him. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, now you're Lucha House Party. Yeah. Move <laughs> we're on. done. We're done. I agree. Well, speaking of luchas, uh, lucha Norris, <laughs> Rey Mysterio came out and ruined Elias's uh, concert again. Uh, Elias doing, you know, saying how the legends. He brings out the legends, the Doctor of Thugonomics, the Undertaker. They come to mess with him, uh, and naturally, Rey comes out, did his thing. Rey botches uh, the the uh, last move of his off the top rope. That was scary for yeah, a second. Yeah, the fans were with him and all about it, and then he botched it. The fans were like, "Ooh, yeah." I'm scared. never covered. Yeah, but it definitely was like, "Ooh, ooh like it got everybody scary." Got yeah. Yeah, exactly. Took care of Brez. Elias runs out. Then Lars comes out of the top of the ramp, marches down uh, the ramp, up into the ring, and absolutely demolishes Rey Mysterio in a way that's a little scary, uh, but pushes Lars even further down. Now, oh, further forward as a character. So this was, uh, I like this, actually. I also liked it. Uh, kind of like I was saying, I like that Lars' this whole, thing has become, this whole thing has become like the... <laughs> the guy attacking his idols almost. That, that's yeah. the vibe I'm getting yeah. from it is that like he's trying to rid the WWE of of all these old people, you know, of all the, <laughs> of all the like people you used to watch, you yeah. know. Uh, he's lurking and yeah. he's ready to attack. So I, um, I, I, I actually really enjoy everything they're doing with Lars. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that they have done a solid job of making him feel like a, yeah. a, a force, a yeah. presence. We'll see how that plays out. Well, I mean, because you've already got McIntyre and Lashley and uh, Corbin, all big dudes who are villains. So where do you slide in Lars? I, you know what? I didn't think about that. Because of that, I actually think it might make sense to send Drew McIntyre to SmackDown now. Yeah, yeah. I think it might actually make a little sense. Get him away from Baron Corbin and Bobby Lashley. Right. And let Lars take the kind of like, get, get the push that Drew was getting on Raw. What if it's Lashley? What if it's last that goes to SmackDown? I wouldn't surprise me either, and I wouldn't yeah. be against it. I wouldn't be against it. I wouldn't be I against think Leo it. Leo would be good in SmackDown. Yeah. Both of them. I wouldn't be against it. Yeah. I could also see them splitting them up. Oh yeah, that's I possible could see them too. sending sure. just Lashley to SmackDown sure. and then oh, and awesome. having Leo be part of the Raw or what? something like that. Like yeah. just the just just wrestling on Raw now or something yeah. like that. Right. I don't know that, but I wouldn't I, it wouldn't surprise me. Hmm. Okay. 
Well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, maybe, maybe the acquisition is all three of them. Oh, uh, let's move on. God, please no. <laughs> all right, the Usos did a great, another one of those great promos on the backstage there, and then Bobby Roode and Chad Gable in the ring talking their mess, and the Usos came out, and it was a good match here. The Usos, you know, everyone was wondering why they dropped the belt to the Hardys. Immediately, the thought was, oh, they're going to go to Raw, and sure enough, that's what happened. Uh, they, this is a fun match. I don't know if Gable and Roode. I like Gable and Roode being heels. I just don't know if, you know, I don't know if, they, uh, like Hawkins and Ryder having the belts is, always, is already weird enough, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, but having these two possibly get the belt again would be even weirder. Um, but I like the Usos coming on Raw. It's going to be interesting. I really enjoyed them on SmackDown. I wonder what's going to happen here on Raw. I mean, the Usos and the Viking experience would be an interesting matchup. The uh, Yeah. I'm a little bummed that they're going to say, if it's the plan, they're going to send Roman to SmackDown. Yeah. That we're not going to get kind of like, the Uso dynasty kind of like oh, thing, yeah. you know, like, right. like now the shield is maybe done. Yeah. Uh, I thought maybe they were going to go into the like Usos and Roman kind of thing yeah. and, and kind of like give the, the Usos a huge rub from yeah. that and yeah. kind of like get them over even more um, or at least to the next level. Yeah. Um, With but, Nia. But it does, <laughs> but it will Nia's out for the yeah. next like, year. I saw that for uh, the knee and knees. Yeah. But, uh, but, but I do think they're going to send Roman to SmackDown. Okay. So, I do think that with Roman not being there, Vince loves his loves having Samoans on the show. He does. So I could see the Usos getting a really big push. Hell yes. Yeah, I think they've earned it. I think they're really entertaining. They they're they're incredibly um, interesting on the mic. I think yep. they're fun to watch. Yep. Um, I, I, I think this is going to be their their year in WWE. I think that they've already had great stuff with SmackDown, mm -hmm. but like Raw is the flagship show. Yep. I mean, yep. like, and, and maybe when things when the Fox stuff happens that that'll change but for now it's still the flagship show yep. and i and i do think that having um uh the usos on raw will is, is one of the biggest gets of the of so far of I the thoroughly, Super Bowl thoroughly agree uh Ryder and hawkins it was uh, just you know kiss those titles goodbye it was nice the time you had them uh, the usos are going to take those titles yeah. and that they're, they're that's going to be a fun rivalry uh, a fun uh, uh title reign and they're so good now they've come back in a completely different way. and Corey Graves said it like they were on raw before yeah when they were on raw before the fans were kind of turning on yeah, them that's when they still had the face paint. exactly all that all the and i didn't like them either on raw how they've changed so much on smackdown and to come back to raw now in a different way i think it's gonna be gonna launch these guys into superstar yeah, like superstardom i yeah, I, I, I feel the exact same way yeah. i think that there was a resentment against them before and yeah. and look there is a good portion of the crowd who does not watch smackdown like i know right. we, we all don't want to believe it but like it's true i know like people like my dad like they watch raw yeah and i know my dad watches smackdown sometimes but right. like it's not he doesn't have to watch SmackDown. Like exactly. Christian, Christian doesn't have to watch SmackDown. Right. He has to watch Raw. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to watch SmackDown. Um, so I think that you know, for someone like for people like that, they're going to be pleasantly surprised with the change yeah. that the Usos, the, the transformation the Usos have gone through. Yeah. How can you say the Usos penitentiary, but you can't say <laughs> you can't say war? I, I, just, I, I got, like, once again, I don't know where the, these phantom well, lines. Jails are. exist in every town. So does war. In every country, <laughs> and especially the United States. So, I mean, I'm just like, I don't understand what the problem is here. All right, let's move on here uh, to maybe the greatest moment of the night, Sami Zayn. Jesus, Mary, mother of God. This, this guy, yeah. this guy is, I mean, if you're going to miss Kevin Owens, Sammy, Sam, I, will, I will always, in my mind, I will always choose Sammy over Kevin. I just love Sammy and what he does in the ring. I love that theme song of his, the way he played it up this way, coming out, doing the dance, the old school dance. Uh, at his age, we could still do. And then, then they played it again, which was great. And then he totally tore into the everybody who was there in Montreal, which was fantastic, making the Quebecan references, uh, everything like that. Um, just, I don't know, it's greatest moment of the night, in yeah, my opinion. I, I, I loved how, uh, I couldn't tell if like, the crowd couldn't hear what he was saying under yeah, his yeah. breath about how he was clearly messing with them yeah, the yeah, whole time. Yeah, yeah, from the beginning until yeah, like, he like, finally made it clear. Watch till I, what, let me escalate this a little more. I kept, yeah, like, he yeah, kept yeah. saying something like that. Like I forgot what he was going to say. What he was saying. Is it like but, they're, they're like Pavlov's dogs? Oh, they're like dogs. Watch this, just like <laughs> that. Yeah. No, come on. And, and, and what, my, when he did the ole ole thing, uh, I loved it because. He has actually done that in WWE. No, that's like been the one thing the crowd has chanted at him since he yes. got there. But I don't think we've ever heard Sammy himself yeah. do the Olay chant uh, on TV. And I was like, whoa, yeah. you know, like I was like, oh hell yeah. And yeah. And, and right when he just started doing all that, I just said to my girlfriend, I was like, man. I can't wait to watch him just shove this down all their throats. Oh yeah, I love this. I can't wait. And he did it. He, it was it was such a great done set. so well. Um, it was like two minutes of cheers, <laughs> and then whoop. 
<laughs> it's about how much he hates all of them. Yeah. I, I, very well done. Um, definitely one of the best moments of the night for sure. Yeah. Uh, this new heel Sami Zayn character is great. Um, since we didn't really get to talk about it uh, last week. Yeah, yeah. I was a little annoyed that they had him start this all off with a loss. I didn't think it made oh, any sense yeah, last week to do that. I'm yeah. um, so I'm glad that this week was kind of just him coming out and doing a promo. Yeah, maybe they you maybe know? they realized that as well. It was silly. It yeah. made no sense to have him come out and lose for no reason. He yeah. didn't have to come out and lose. He could have just come out and done that promo and it would have been awesome. And right. would have been like pumped on it. So right. um, I like that they're giving Sammy this freedom and and you know what? I'm sorry, like I he's not wrong. <laughs> like, no, I that was, was very interesting. You know, that's yeah. the that's the like most meta part about this whole thing is that he's not wrong. Yeah. yeah. Like th like I'm sorry, but there are th there's a good portion of this fan base that is very toxic. Him you know? and him and Kevin Owens have both been going off about this in separate ways in the last two or three years in their characters, in their promos. Right? When when Kevin Owens went heel, same thing, talking about how the fans are toxic, nobody believed in him, you know, you guys don't you guys don't appreciate, blah, blah, blah. Sammy did the same thing. They skirt so close to like actually insulting the fans, but they hide behind the heel character. It's kind of brilliant of creative to let him do that mm -hmm. because it's as close as we're going to come to the real thing. And there are a lot of wrestlers who suffer from the toxicity, read this stuff, get very affected by it emotionally, whatever. Who wouldn't as a performer? I mean, to a way, way, way lesser degree, a lot of the Smowdown people, participants, they get so destroyed by some of the YouTube comments. Trust me, a lot of them don't go on YouTube like Rachel or Clark do sometimes, I mean, on Twitter whatever, and talk about it, a lot of them sit in silence and endure it and they hate it and they only talk about it with us. So, you know, this really does affect people. So Dude, say, I, seeing I, Sammy do it is insane. I, I, you know, was getting people saying the meanest things about oh, yeah. me on social media. For the Sasha, for the Bailey, Sasha thing. Bailey thing. Oh, yeah. Like, I just get off on making things up. I didn't make shit up. <laughs> like, I, I didn't make anything up. I talked to so many people about this. I even confirmed with people after I tweeted about yeah, yeah, yeah. it, that are even closer to this situation. So it's like, to have all these 12 year olds, and finally my girlfriend had to like, put this in perspective for me, like Ryan, you're letting a bunch of 12 year olds get in your fucking head. Yep. Just stop, yeah. you know, and, and, but it does. Like, it's you tough. Don't want, it's easy when, to, when you don't have it happen to you yeah. ever, when you've never had it happen to you, you have, and you have no idea what it's like to be dogpiled on social media, then you have no idea. I know in such a small yeah. turn of like, the, of like, let's say, hundreds to a thousand people, right? I couldn't imagine having that amplified to millions. Yeah. You know, like that's what the that's what wrestlers are dealing with on social media mm -hmm. and stuff. And, and and to be honest with you, social media giving everybody a voice has then made a lot of people feel entitled. Yes. You know, like like the Bailey and Sasha thing, for example, mm -hmm. of being like like they're owed something. Like they're owed uh, an explanation or mm -hmm. they're owed any, uh, anything, uh, anything. Like I, I worked hard. I'm a fucking news reporter yep. and I work fucking hard to confirm things. I don't just talk to some seventh hand source and mm -hmm. try and put it out there for f like, I gain nothing from that. Yeah. All I've done lose is credibility. I, I, if I were to make things, I'd lose so credibility. Yeah. And you can't say like, oh, right, has these things happen that are wrong all the time. No, I don't. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, okay, the most recent one of like, that was Maria and Mike. And you know what? That story was right. I don't care what yeah. you said. Yeah. You know what? I don't care. You know, I know what I know. I know it was right. Well, and that's the thing that people don't understand. And Ryan, it's real tough sometimes to not weigh into these battles when people, like last night on Twitter, I, I almost weighed in on a couple of people commenting about the Bailey. Oh, they were reposting your thing about lying on the floor and they refused to recognize the nuance of what you were saying. Correct. They wanted to overgeneralize what you were saying. It was like, well, you implied this. Right. Implying Impl something is not saying no, something. That's you interpreting that's it a you certain, interpreting certain way, in your... and then blaming the other person yes. for your interpretation. Because then it's like, oh, well, you're backtracking. No, I didn't backtrack. Yeah. I was trying to explain to people yeah. for the idiots <laughs> that didn't understand yeah. what my initial tweet said because I never said Sasha and Bailey are laying on the floor for seven fucking hours. Yeah. I said Sasha and Bailey were laying on the floor because that's what people saw. Yeah. I don't know the exact length of time, right. but obviously they weren't there for the whole show. <laughs> like, that's crazy. That's crazy. Even if they went back to their hotel <laughs> and they did it in the hotel. Do you yeah. think I'm stupid enough to think that Sasha and Bailey laid on the ground for seven hours at WrestleMania? Are you stands stupid? <laughs> like, it blew my mind. Like, that blew my mind. Yeah. I, and the, the fact that people were tweeting me and sending me, like, the, the two different tweets, I'm like, yeah, all you're doing by sending me these two separate tweets of yeah, mine is showing that you're stupid yeah. and don't
don't know how to read. Yeah, that's the way I felt too. And that's why I almost weighed in because I know the sources you have. We talk about it off camera. We talk about the things that you experience and the people you speak to. Somebody sitting in their basement or somebody sitting in their apartment has no contact to the WWE, has no contact with sources at WWE, and they think they can school you on what you find out as a news reporter. And the thing is, your website depends on you being right for a majority. Yes, are you things you're going to get wrong? Right. Guess what? Everyone criticizing? You've messed up too. Should I judge you as an entire person because you've weighed one or two mistakes or four or five? This is how it goes when you're a news organization. And some people, those people that you're reporting on, twist things back around for the narrative in order to cover their asses and leave reporters like you or sites like, like you or Collider twisting in the wind because they don't want to be seen bad by the public. And let's and be honest with you. That's the game. That's and, the game. And... Sasha and Bailey never said I was wrong. Nope, they never once have tweeted. They that never said. once said. And, and I, they so, easily could have quote tweeted me and yeah. just said, "Not true." Yeah, yeah. There's a reason they didn't do that. People said Sasha went back at you and said that she corrected you. I was like, I looked through her Twitter. She didn't say nothing. She, she said didn't. something like, "She said something like, uh, you wish you knew your marks or something like that." Right. And then she deleted it. Like you yeah. know, and and also the things that she posted on 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 the picture of Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. I didn't say they were mad at losing yeah. to Billy Kay and Peyton Royce, which we'll get into yeah, when we, we talk about the Iconics. I didn't say that. What I said is that they were mad about losing the tag team about titles. About the result. Yeah. Those are very different, yeah, things. It's, different it's things. It's very simple. It's very easy to be mad about the creative direction of your character right. while also being happy for the person who beats you because they deserve an honor as well. It's, yeah. it's, it's so silly. It's so silly that people were like, well, this picture proved everything that you're wrong. No, it didn't. Yeah. It proved nothing. And neither did the picture of them in the main event yeah. standing outside in the main event. It proved nothing except for yeah. the fact that they w got up off the floor for a little while. Like, who can't? Like, it, it was so yeah. stupid. It was so stupid. Yeah. I, was, ugh, I was so mad. Yeah, people can do multiple things, and, and that's that's the thing. All right, I like see. how we got into that. As, yeah. as segue. As perfect, perfect segue. Perfect. <laughs> speaking, of, <laughs> speaking of losing the titles, the Iconics were on Raw here confronting Bayley. Uh, they went out and, you know, did their classic character stuff. They, they, they do what I've always said. They have a good character. They have good characters. They did a good stuff. A good heel turn there with Bayley. They do infuriate the piss out of me. It's tough to watch sometimes. Uh, so tell us how you really felt about them winning the tag team titles. Oh, man. How, walk us through that moment. <laughs> First of all, Aaron and and uh, uh, Aaron ruined it for me. <laughs> first of all, by saying, and then you two, you two went at me. Were tag you team. behind? Yeah, I was behind. Oh. Because because of well, I, I can't remember what it was. Oh, because I started watching NXT Takeover that morning first, right before Raw, okay. right before the two o'clock. But my girlfriend and I had some things going on, so I had to delay a little bit. And I and I was not going to delay, but she got delayed to going over to her sister to hang out so I could watch Raw, or oh, SmackDown, or oh, I mean fucking WrestleMania, WrestleMania by myself. But so we got delayed a little bit. Okay. Which is what happened. It's a couple stuff. It happens. So when you guys started doing, I was like, son of a bitch. And I just got <laughs> into the bathroom and I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to take a crap. Enjoy. I, I finished lunch, taking crap. Now I'm going to sit down and watch this match. And the match was already ruined for me before I got there. And I was like, oh, maybe because sometimes you guys. I are, wondered, I, I was I wondered why it took him so long yeah. to reply to us too. I thought, because <laughs> I tweeted saying like, Roka still hasn't responded to us. And I wondered why. That makes sense now. Okay. Yeah. And you guys were, and, and, and I was like, oh, maybe there, because sometimes you guys will tweet me about the iconic. <laughs> and it'll be just like you, you jump the gun or you think something, especially Aaron. Aaron loves to jump the oh, gun. Oh, yeah. Aaron loves to jump the gun. And so I, I was like, okay, so maybe it doesn't mean that they win, especially because it looked very clearly like Sasha and Bailey were going to win this goddamn thing. And then out of nowhere, and I was, <laughs> and they gave uh, uh, Bailey, the, Bailey took the loss. Yes. Right? And so, and because I'm sure Sasha was like, I'm not taking that fucking <laughs> pin. And so it went down. I was super, super mad. I was upset. I knew it was. I knew it was a possibility. As the, it was getting closer to WrestleMania, my mind started twisting in my head like, "This could happen. You need to prepare yourself. This could happen." And yes, I know it's scripted. Blah blah blah. But like when it happened, I was so fucking mad, and I just paused it. And I like for like half an hour, I just sat there like, "This is." St I'm so fuming, man. And I'm seeing all the tweets coming through, and everyone making fun of me. And everyone <laughs> talk about dogpile social media. Everyone's going like, "I want to see Rogue." His face, Roka's head exploding, blah blah blah. All of you were right. Roka's head exploded. Roka was super pissed. And because I love Sasha and Bailey so goddamn much, and I because I think they should have been the standard bearers for the tag team titles going forward. I don't understand this. And Ryan and I had a very 
lively back and forth about <laughs> it on uh, text. text yeah, over the weekend. We were really talking about it because we'd finally gotten over our sickness. We were able to go back and forth. And I just, I feel like Sasha always gets screwed over by the WWE. They give her a title, then they take it off her so quickly. And I think it's unfair. I, I mentioned the possibility of race because Naomi has also complained about how she's booked on, on SmackDown and not given t- lengthy title runs for a while now. But Naomi did have a title run and SmackDown for quite some time. And you schooled me and made me remember that Jacqueline had the title twice years ago. Jazz as well. So there have been female black wrestlers who have been champions. I just don't know what it is about Sasha that they will not let her have a lengthy title run. And maybe there's stuff behind the scenes uh, that I, I can't divulge because I don't know personally. But maybe there's stuff going on behind the scenes. I don't know why he made the decision. For me, I think he made the decision because the Iconics are hot, dudes uh, get hard-ons around them, and they do their characters really well, but they're terrible, terrible wrestlers, and I will not walk away from that. But I will concede they're fantastic characters, and dudes find them hot. And so I think that's, and they want to sell merch, and I think that's why they did what they did. I think it's because... That's my opinion. I think it's because they're one of the, they're the only actual women in the company who have been a tag team for years. Like, That's Sasha true. and Bailey were not a tag team. Right. Like, they were rivals put together. Um, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce, as much as they were told not to be a tag team when they came in, they or instantly became a tag team. They, are, they, are they friends they, from years back? Is that what they it is? Were, so if High you, school it, friends? Or no, no? It's opposite. It's kind of like the opposite of that. Oh. Is They were kind of like both the girl who liked wrestling, so they didn't like each other because oh. of it. And then I think she, I, 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 I want to say on... Chasing Glory, uh, Peyton said that she saw, Bill, after high school, yeah. she saw Billy on a poster for a wrestling school, knowing that she was the other girl who liked wrestling. Oh. And she was like, you know what? I should do that too. And then she went and did it, and mm. then they realized that they were like super alike and became yeah. BFFs and yeah. had been like inseparable, Look, uh, I, inseparable since. But wait, what I was gonna say is I think that, I think that it was, um, I think that it was, uh, um, What's the word I'm looking for? It was given to them because they were they 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 have been the longest female tag team in WWE. Right. Um, when they when they got brought up, they they never uh, said no. They yep. never caused a problem. They've always we're losing. Cool. They're good soldiers. We're losing great. Yep. We're losing great. You're putting someone else over. Cool. And they've been putting people over since the day they got brought up. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that even in NXT they were putting people over. Yeah, yeah. So I think that. I feel like they earned it, regardless of what you want to say about them. I think that they earned it, and I do believe that the two of them together could elevate those tag team titles just like Sasha and Bailey could. I don't think that it's like they have some terrible work that some people think, and regardless, like, I think they can put on good good matches. Like, I don't think they, they'll put on bad matches. I think they've been, they, they are a talented team. So, also... Like you said, um, I never argue their work ethic. I want yeah, that clear. It's the talent as a result that I don't see in the ring. Also, but. I do think that like your attitude behind the scenes says a, it shows a lot. It's, 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 you make a great you're point. You're gonna man. get more with uh, honey than vinegar or whatever, yes, you know. And yes. so you know, I think the iconics have been nothing but great backstage mm-hmm. when 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 asked to do things. And you know yep. what? Like I, I'm not there. But I can certainly say that I have talked to a lot of people who don't feel that way about, who don't feel that same way about Sasha Banks. I mean, like, I was on Ryback's podcast this weekend, and Ryback was there. Ryback, you know, not necessarily at the same time as Sasha Banks, Uh but he is still friends with so many people on that roster. Uh, He talks to them all the time. Right. Uh, And even he was telling me that he he doesn't really hear positive things about her backstage. And you know what? Like, if this is how you react to a decision that Vince made in this big public way, it's not gonna make Vince McMahon happy, you no, know. It's and not. even if it's, yeah. and even if you did it in silence before, yeah, people knew you were unhappy. It's not. It's not like right. you know. You might have done it in silence, but you weren't doing it in silence. Now you talked to a lot of people. A lot of people know yeah, that yeah. she's been unhappy, yeah. you know, for things. And so you know what, like, I, I, it's it's. It's a tough situation because I do think that these are tests. I think when you lose mm-hmm. a title, they look to see how you're going to react. Yeah. You know, like, and we're going to get to EC3 and stuff. But like, I think that these are tests. Yeah. I, I, I feel like EC3 is being buried. We're gonna talk about that. Yeah. But regardless, I think they're tests in Vince's mind. And yeah. you failed yeah. when you show your hand, when you show that you're mad. Maybe, you know, because she's so over. Sasha is so over and she's so like, she's another one. Like people find her incredibly attractive. She's beautiful. She's very talented as a wrestler. She has the Eddie Guerrero connection thing. But yeah, maybe there is stuff behind the scenes. This is not like, and trust me, I don't want this to look like, oh, two dudes talking about a woman and her attitude. I don't want that to be the perception. And I get it, but. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I think male or female, you can have a bad attitude yeah. in the back, and that causes problems, you yes. know, and that can be an issue. There have been plenty of male wrestlers who had bad attitudes. They were eventually ushered out of the company because Vince doesn't deal with it. He doesn't put up with it. He likes loyal soldiers, and he's loyal to people who are loyal to him. And, and, and this will be the first time I mentioned that Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens for a while yeah. had that, had yeah, that had image bad of, attitude, like, yeah. bad attitude. Yep. Like, cause, and probably for the same reason. They yep. felt like they were owed something, you right. know, and so... Believing in yourself is good. Yes. Believing in yourself at the expense of everyone else is, and not understanding how to play the game is not the best, especially because if you don't run the company you and you willingly take the employment, you've got to deal with what comes with it. It happens with every job you work at. I felt I felt that at TMZ 100%. Yeah. You know, I thought I was more important than I was, you know, yeah. and, and it's not... And you have to TMZ has, gone, has done just fine for three years <laughs> without me. Harvey still made millions of dollars without me just fine. So, you know what I mean? Like, it's like... Right. And the WWE will make millions of dollars whether Sasha stays or leaves, exactly. you know? But Sasha is, is an interesting case because she thinks she's being like pushed aside or which is interesting because but she's one of the most popular female wrestlers and one of the most pushed and one of the most pushed gets used one of the most streams merchandise she's on the cricket wireless thing she does so many things but maybe for her it's still not enough because she sees becky and charlotte and even ronda coming in and taking a, a possible and she sees them doing what they're doing uh and you know wants that slot as well but becky took so many losses becky was the forgotten horsewoman for so many years and so, hey, maybe do that for a little bit. Take the lumps, learn, grow a little bit, mature, and then the audience and the backstage and Vince will love you even more. Yeah, I mean, I think you said it perfectly there. I think that, you know, and I don't think it's fair to compare it to some of the people who just aren't being used. Right. Like the revival. They just weren't being used. Right. You know, like th those cases are just different. Or, Sasha is one of the most featured women in the company. Right. Or as a woman who's the, d does the double somersaults? I forget. Dana Brooke. Dana Brooke. Like Dana Brooke could have a legitimate case. Dana is a fantastic wrestler. She's very athletic. She's decent on the mic, but like she's athletic. I, I will say this. She's very athletic. <laughs> yeah. She's good on the mic. She I thought she did well in the Battle Royal. I was really enjoying her in the Battle Royal, but like she could have a case. Sasha's pushed all over the place. All the time. Yeah. So it's, it's not, it's, I don't think it's, com it's comparable. Yeah. Uh, Comparative. I, I just. Yeah. I really don't. Comparable. Yeah. Comparative. Yeah, uh, comparable. <laughs> comparable. I mean, worry, I, know, over. I misspeak all the time. Comparable. <laughs> yes. Comparable. But like he, overall. But we'll we'll move on from this. Overall, we'll see what the iconics done with. It. I don't know how long because already they had him take a loss uh, tonight against Bailey and Naomi, or last night rather against Bailey and Naomi. This could be an interesting team, Bailey and Naomi. I don't know if they'll stay together as a tag team, but I like their energy, and she seems to lift Bailey up. Whereas with Sasha, it was a little more about how does Sasha. Shine. So, I think Sasha's yeah. going to SmackDown. You do? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're breaking them up. I think so. Yeah, yeah. That's my guess. You think they're playing into it with the phone call and everything like that? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's so dangerous. <laughs> That's so, because poor Bailey has to do it. She has yeah. to play the character. Yeah. She has to play the storyline. Mm -hmm. So that's how it goes. So mm -hmm. you got to make it look like Sasha's the one running off pouting and being by herself. Mm -hmm. Wow. If they turn Sasha heel, maybe this will all be for a good reason. It's insane that Sasha Banks hasn't heel. been a heel on yeah. the, the main turn, roster. Turn yet. her heel on SmackDown if she goes, and then let her lay waste to that freaking division. Yes. That would be good. It would be good. I, right? I, I completely agree. I mean, Sasha versus Charlotte being the centerpiece of, of SmackDown in the absence of Becky would be great. That'd be fantastic. Because they had such great matches matches at NXT and a few times on Raw as well. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, well, you talk about EC3 getting buried. Braun Strowman absolutely buried EC3. Yeah, I, what this, was the I, point I, of this? I texted Roka last night mm -hmm. when, when I was watching the show yeah. because I, I, I always go like, oh, on the show, I was like, you can't, they're not being buried, Roka. <laughs> I think it's okay to say it here. I, okay. I, I really don't understand. I just don't understand. I thought maybe this was like a send off, like, oh, Raw just wasn't for him. Let's send him to SmackDown. This is his like send off from yeah. Raw to SmackDown. But no, after the show, they confirmed EC3 staying on Raw. Why? What are they doing with EC3? Yeah. Like, why does Vince hate EC3? It's a good point. Is it I, the only thing I can think is that he's like trying to make an example because it's a car, it's a Carter from Impact, and it's like, look at us. The one guy who was Dixie Carter's son or cousin or whatever mm -hmm. is a loser in WWE. You know, that's like literally the only thing I can think of because it makes no sense. EC3 is he, so built. He's got a great character and yep. they've done nothing 
but garbage with him. Yep. Vince can be petty as fuck. So it's certainly possible that he's doing that. When they had like Sting lose to Triple H, that was his way of going, WWE's always better than WCW. Yep. Uh, that, that He will always push that forward. The way they trade, treated Bischoff, that whole time he was there, giving him a taste of the ring and then smacking him down completely, that's Vince once again. WWE's better than WCW. If he's doing the same thing with EC3, it's such a short-sighted mistake because EC3 can be one of your top earners, could make you sell you merch. He's a great-looking dude. He's a seasoned, experienced wrestler who's been a champion at multiple companies. So why not use him in a positive way, use him in a good way, get the fans enjoying that guy. He could be another superstar for you, more than Lashley, more than uh, McIntyre, more than Corbin. That guy, to me, has the possibility to be a superstar at Raw. I also feel like he wasn't what WWE wanted before. He left WWE, and he worked so goddamn yeah. hard yeah. to be exactly what WWE wants. Yeah. The look, the character, even the style of wrestling. Yeah. He tried so hard, and then they rehire him, and it's like they put him in NXT and do nothing with him in NXT. Yeah. They really didn't do shit with him in NXT. I'm sorry, they didn't. They did a good uh, intro. Good, they gave him the cool good music. Titan song, yeah. Good, yeah, but, but they didn't do anything with yeah. him in NXT. I was hoping he was going to have an Elias like call up where it was like did nothing with him in NXT because he's such a clearly a sports entertainment kind of a guy. Right, right. Um, but they've done nothing with him. I'm just scared that they see him like Chris Masters or you know these other kind of really uh, muscly dudes that didn't quite wasn't quite as limber in the ring. He's good in the ring, and they need to give him more opportunities. Or they're just going to lose him, and he's eventually just going to be on main event or something like that, which would be sad for him. I I saw that during, I want to say it was uh, the Raw after Mania or SmackDown mm. after Mania, one of the two. He had a dark match where Drake Maverick was his oh, manager. Right. I was really hoping they were going to, like, launch into that on, on Raw this week or yeah. something or SmackDown next week. Um, it would make sense. Yeah. They're not really doing much of Drake Maverick right now. Um they pay, they they go well together. They've yeah. done it in the past. Um, I, I I just need. They should just do something with him. I mean, this is honestly, it's just fucked up, man. Yeah. Like, it's just like I I I I, I, yeah. I try to be as positive as possible, but I'm sorry. Like, I can't look at this EC3 thing as anything else but yeah. just like messed up. Like, yeah. I feel bad for the guy. Yeah. Yeah. It literally just seems like Vince hates him. Yeah. And the, so that's the thing. Why? I don't I've know. texted multiple people saying. Why does Vince hate EC3? Yeah. And I haven't gotten an answer yet. From so anybody. We'll see. We'll, what I, what I'm able to get back on that, that text message because I am confused. Yeah. I'm very confused. We got to figure out what's going on with that. Because, I mean, like, uh, the Young Bucks must look at that guy over there getting getting buried as you did and be like, man, we could use that guy here. We could totally use that guy at AEW. Right? I would think. You could use a, a, a he's, He still has pull. And he's got indie pull as well. Yeah. So hey, you want to you want to bring him over. All right, let's move on. Becky Lynch and Ruby Riot got into it here. Becky Lynch, nice promo. Then Ruby Riot comes out. Out. They have a back and f they have a good match. She ends up destroying the entire riot squad. I'm talking about bearing, and uh, and then and then because apparently they can't beat anybody three on one, which makes no sense to me. Uh, and then Natty comes out to challenge <sighs> Becky for the titles, and then Lacey comes out, and then they have a match for number. One. Somehow those two consider themselves number one contenders. <laughs> Lacey hasn't even have a fucking match in the in the in the main roster, but somehow she's a number one contender to fight Natty. Um, this is boring. This I'm sorry. Beyond this bored me to tears. Ruby Riot should be the one fighting Becky toe to toe on a, in a 20 minute match. Ruby's incredibly talented young wrestler who needs more of a push. You're and not feeling the Lacey Evans push with I Becky? Hate, I hate really? everything about Lacey Evans. I hate every fucking thing about Lacey Evans. She's bored, really? But the whole promenading, oh, the I love boring, it. all that stuff. Her story is incredible. Now, uh, see, I love Marine, the, I love the character the though. The single mom stuff. Like I love all of it, but the character drives me nuts. And her in ring wrestling is. A little boring, like at NXT. I didn't like her at NXT. She didn't either. wrestle that much at NXT. That, there you go. But not because she didn't have. She was new still. Yeah, but like every time I saw her, eh, I'll take uh, Johnny Gargano's uh, wife. I'll take Candice over Lacey any day. But you can't I, I, look. Or 
Kamari Sane or Io. I'll take all those over Lacey Evans at NXT. Right I now. love Candice LeRae. One Candace of my all-time fantastic. favorite wrestlers. I, I, I'm tired of her just being biggest Candice LeRae Johnny. Fan, but you know what? I, I don't think it's fair to say that her character is better than Lacey Evans. No, I, Lacey Evans has opinion. such an established character. What's Candice oh, no, no, LeRae's character? Good, what's a, Lurie's character? No, no, uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm not arguing. I'm arguing in the ring. In, in the, the ring. I, I enjoy, I enjoy Candice more in the ring than I do Lacey. Fair. I yeah. just think that Lacey's you know, methodical. Vince isn't isn't there for right ring ring you know like how, how well they can go to bell to bell it's characters and yeah lacey evans is such a strong character it is a right strong now. character like I, I think the punch last week was awesome i think that the woman's right I, yeah i think that this kind of like going into it more was awesome i actually really enjoyed i felt bad for natalia yes because i do i did feel like th as much as i like natalia um it was i felt so bad that she dropped the like the line that Canada is supposed to pop for no matter what. Yeah. And they just didn't. Like she said she was the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. And People Canada booed. just went like, oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. People you know, booed. And I felt bad because I really, really, really like mm -hmm. Natalia. Um, but it was just like a silence when she said it. Um but no, I actually I think the character case the character of Lacey Evans is awesome. I, mm -hmm. I think that um, that moonsault was cool as yep. much as, as painful as it looked. Yeah, um, it looked like she really hit her. It, yeah, oh she did. I mean, yeah. you rewind it, you yeah. saw her Natty knees went right like, into oh. her like into like her boobs yeah. and her stomach. It looked oh, it looked painful. But but uh, I I. Yeah, I actually really enjoy. It. I think the the Lacey is such a strong character that mm. I actually enjoy playing the, the way she's playing off of Becky. I don't think that the mm -hmm. a, I think a feud with Ruby would feel throwaway right now. Boom! There we go. Look at that. Our our thing just changed there. <laughs> uh oh, Adam! Adam going on there messing with the buttons. Uh, no, it's like at the end of the Oscars when they play the music on you. <laughs> Turn the red light on, Adam. Uh, no, with this uh, with this situation, I, I I you know I'll go back and forth about it as well. Once again, I I don't know how many people watch this stuff, so I don't want Lacey to think do. I'm against her as a person. I just don't 100 percent like what she does in the ring, and that's just my opinion. Her character is fantastic. I don't I enjoy her style in the ring. We'll see how it plays out. Maybe her and Becky have fantastic chemistry. It'll be a good match. We'll see. But it was time they did something with her. So now going forward. And I will say this, after the Natty situation and all that, uh, uh, my respect for her is growing uh, inside personally. Not that she could care less, I'm sure. But like um, her putting all these people over constantly for years, like that can't be uh, dismissed. No. Nope. You want to talk about good attitude, good soldier, do, does her job. She probably does. I've seen her complain on Total Divas at times that she gets pushed aside or that WrestleMania match that was taken from her like she does hurt her as a human being would be hurt uh, but the fact that she's always willing to put other people over it shows that she understands the business knows what the business is is a lifer and I think that's why they always come back and give her opportunities because they know that she's uh, been a good soldier and trains a lot of these girls as well so I have a hard time right. believing that she's not a lifer yeah I yeah. mean she'll be there forever I think unless yeah. she unless it's her doing but I, yeah, right. I, I, I have a hard time believing they'd ever get rid of her yeah well let's wrap up because we gotta we gotta shut this thing down clearly Ray, yeah, Reigns Rollins AJ and uh, Cor uh, took on Corbin Lashley and McIntyre the shock edition AJ Styles now uh, at Raw so this will be interesting AJ Styles that's gonna be a lot of fun did you expect this I didn't actually. Really? Yeah, because AJ's Who'd you so think it was gonna be? familiar with SmackDown. I don't know. I, I like to stay open and see what they do. Because <laughs> once again, I didn't think it was gonna be fucking Iconics. So, you know, you never know what's gonna happen. But AJ Styles coming in uh, was a great surprise. And then good match all around, giving him the win, good. Uh, Corbin Lashley and McIntyre, I guess they're gonna break him up, but they're like the anti-Shield. They really, are definitely right? the anti-Shield, It's like really yeah. interesting. Um, I actually totally expected AJ. Okay. I, I thought, eh, if it had been anyone but AJ, it would have been silly at this yeah. point. They, they hyped it up so much. Right. Uh, yes, AJ is so synonymous with SmackDown at this point, but I, I, I think it was needed. I think yeah. that he'd kind of done everything he was yeah, going to do did. on SmackDown. It was done. They took the title off of him. Yeah. He carried it for that long. He promoted the game. He did everything he needed to do. Not let him have a run on Raw. We'll see what happens. This further proves the point. Like At some point, Rollins got to drop that belt. Some, some heels got to get that belt. There are too many faces now that have come over into Raw last night. Miz, AJ, all these faces coming through. Well, what's going to happen here? So you've got to either turn Rollins heel or someone's, some heels got to take the belt off Rollins. So we have now some fights to get there. I also feel like there's going to be another shakeup before the Fox thing happens. Oh, okay. I think there's going to be one. Okay. I, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest bit to see them kind of like make the roster very Fox or SmackDown heavy once the once that change yeah, happens yeah. or whatever. So, um, but yeah, I like the move though. I think that yep. I think AJ needs to be on Raw. I agree with you that it's going to be tough. 
he needs to find that there's going to be he needs to find his place yeah. on the roster yeah. um and also not feel too similar to rollins maybe you know because they are so similar maybe ec3 maybe this is the way out Maybe this is the way out. Maybe AJ Styles versus EC3 is the way out. Maybe Drake Maverick coming in and EC's like just broken in the locker room and Drake goes, I know what to do with you. I can change you around. I was changing AOP around. I can change you around. Trust me. And then if Leo Rush and Lashley go or they break up, you kind of put that slot in there now with Drake Maverick and EC3. Have him fight AJ. AJ helps him get over a little more. It's certainly possible. These are nice like ways of thinking, Roka, <laughs> but I, I I don't believe that's the thought process that's going on based on what I have seen them do with EC3 so far. True, true. Oh, God. More likely we'll be standing in the back of a shot looking at a mirror. I just don't understand taking a guy and not trying to make money off him or a girl and not trying to make money off him. It just makes no sense. It to makes me. no sense to me either. Business wise. It makes no sense to me either. Yeah. I did notice one thing, you know, I feel like AJ wasn't really doing the too sweet thing anymore. Yeah. Yep. Um, but in, in uh, his backstage interview, he was doing like the too sweet thing. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. uh, last night in the you know W.com right. post show interview or whatever, I'm wondering if they're gonna kind of like lean into that a little more now that he's back on Raw. Okay. Like, uh, I don't know, they're gonna do maybe more Bullet Clubby kind of stuff. Gallows and Anderson, you think? Are they on? No, With, they're on SmackDown. Oh, okay. What about Balor? If Balor doesn't go. That's why I was almost wondering if like they were leaning into that because they're gonna kind of like do something with the two of them. Could be interesting. I really, Balor needs to go to SmackDown more than anyone. Yeah, fair. He really does. We'll find out tonight. Yeah. That's for sure. He was, he was wearing the blue tights last night, so maybe that's his. Uh, maybe that's a hint. We'll see. Uh, all right. Well, that's our recap of uh, Raw from last night here on the Pro Wrestling Sheet. I want to thank all of you for watching. Uh, Ryan, tell them where they can read and follow everything. ProWrestlingSheet.com. That's where you can check out the stories that we post on the website throughout the week. All the biggest stories in the world of professional wrestling. Wrestling, at Wrestling Sheet on social media. That's where you can follow us. I'm at Ryan Satin on social media. Also, if you want to watch the videos that we do of this show, they're on YouTube. YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheets, where you can find the Raw and SmackDown recaps. That's where you can find Wrestling Sheet Radio and any other videos that I have time to make throughout <laughs> the week. Uh, if you're already on there, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. But while you're there, please subscribe, please comment, please like the videos, share them, do all all that kind of stuff. It really does help me out a lot. It helps spread the word. It helps build the subscriber count up. Mm -hmm. It allows me to make more stuff here. So please, please keep continuing to do that. Also, if you just want to listen while you're driving or cooking or working out or wherever, make sure you subscribe on all podcast feeds as well. Spotify, YouTube, uh, Podcast One, Stitcher, uh, all of those. Check them out. Wrestling Sheet Radio. Boom. All right, you can follow me at The Rogue Says. Follow him at Ryan Satin. And, uh, you know, thanks for all the tweets bashing me about the Iconics. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. I read them all and took the hits all day that day and the next day as well. So there you go. You got my response. All right. We'll see you tomorrow with a SmackDown Live recap on the Pro Wrestling Sheet. Superstar Shakeup continuing tonight. We'll see what happens. All right, take care, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great Monday or Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> ProWrestlingSheet.com.